sacrifice of the supreme being referred to in this purusha suktam as the son of god the son of god has been sacrificed in this yajna and what happened after this sacrifice is what this particular mantras are elaborating and the first 
the divine being has to be sacrificed because from this sacrifice came different things that were required to sustain this world and the very first thing that came out is the material that is required as food the animals and different things but we were also comparing the ritual aspect with the spiritual aspect how is it related to each one what is this sacrifice mean in the context of our own self what does this sacrifice do to ourselves this is the main important aspect of it the sacrifice doesn't mean killing ourselves sacrifice or hurting ourselves sacrifice is what is it that you can go that extra mile to offer to love and serve the creation that's all it means nothing more than that the sacrifice that they did of the son of god is something that cannot be emulated or imitated by anybody period that sacrifice belongs to only to the son of god the jesus the christ nobody can even do that kind of sacrifice that is not the sacrifice we are talking about who will which son will say okay father you have asked me to sacrifice myself for raising the mass consciousness so let them come and kill me which son will tell a father like that no son in this material world have that kind of level of commitment to the father and say father thy will be done no son will ever have that kind of commitment to the father and we will come to this on the easter sunday so is the father that he will not care anything about anybody whatever come may go his sankalpa the divine will is so supreme that he will sacrifice himself for the sake of the entire creation that sacrifice is not we are talking about here what these mantras are actually talking about is when you decide to sacrifice your vices your even your bad qualities in this yajna you will be transformed and i went and elaborated each and every step what is this sam samhrutam prashadajyam what does it mean that ghee mixed with curds coming out what does it mean the animals coming out what does it mean all the different villages coming out what does it mean in the context of the different aspects of vedas coming out what does it mean now we come to different types of animals are described in this particular mantra tasmat ashwah ajayanta then after this ruchah samani jigne all these three vedas came out and the chandas came out then what came out of this sacrifice now what is talking about what came out of the homa or the yajna is what is being described here ashwah ajayanta literal meaning of this mantra is ashwah means horses came out then came out those that have one set of teeth and two sets of teeth eka ubhaya two and one sets of teeth beings with two and one sets of teeth came out and i already asked to do the google exercise what are the animals with one set of teeth and two sets of teeth how many sets of teeth we have two two what is the animal with only one set of teeth horses yeah yeah then gavaha also means cows came out specifically cow is called out here and then then came ajaha means goats avayaha means water buffaloes Huh? those came out now you ask the question what is this mantra in the middle of all this stuff why this entire zoo is described huh? life of pi is described all the animals getting onto the boat huh? noah's story who's who read the noah's story huh? you know the noah's story yeah and who else knows the noah's story what did noah do tell them it's important huh in the context of what noah did 
Anu. Uh. Um, well, I think it was God told him that he should take um, like all the animals and put them on the boat, like to the brave for this, and then for seven days, like there will be a storm and everything will be destroyed, and then and then after that, like he, I think after that, um, the animals were on the boat, but then. Wait, what part do you want? <laughs> <laughs> Keep telling whatever you know. <laughs> God told him to build a boat. Right? Yeah. He didn't ask the question, please tell me why I should build a boat. God told me to build a boat and he simply built a huge boat for the sake of protecting all the animals and his creation because a calamity was coming through. Right? What's the moral of the story? Noah's Ark. Hmm? Obedience. Implicit obedience for the, for the word of God. That's it. No question asked. Look sir, you know, I really don't have time to build all this boat and all. I have a project deadline coming out. You know, he didn't say any of that stuff. He said, God asked me to build a boat and I shall build the boat. That's it. Right? Now in the process what happened? His family was saved and all the animals were saved. And all the entire forestry animals came into his boat. Now in this context uh, from God came out all these animals or from the Yajna came out all these animals and that is what is the literal meaning of it. Now why only certain animals are described and why not all the other types of animals, right? The list is pretty long in life of my zoo, right? There are so many other animals that are present in the zoo. Why only this particular set of animals are described? Now you see these Veda mantras are so incredible. They don't relate to what this meaning of these, each of these words last, last time when we had the class. I, I was just sitting here and having the class. Swami was giving this meaning which was so profound. I was just getting jolted. You know, I was driving back and telling Haima, look, the meaning of this mantra is nothing what is written. Swami was giving some beautiful insights which was really like incredible. And what this means is all these animals that are being talked about are the most important types of beings that live in this society. To begin with, the Ashwah means the uncontrollable horses, the crazy maniacs that get up and run in the world because they keep running and running and running and running. Something makes them run. They cannot stop running. They get onto the bed and they will still be running. They are lying down and they will still be running. Who are those? 95% of the crowd are Ashwa. They are very simply running horses. Their life is all about running, 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 running from one place to another place. Those type of animals are one set of human beings. You understand? Now, then, yes. So that's also associated with the mind, right? Yeah, yeah. So that means those that are controlled by the thoughts. Ashwa. Those that are controlled by the thoughts. So the thought makes them run. They get up and run because some thought came. They don't even think why this thought is coming. What is the point of this thought? Should I act on it or not? In fact, the thought controls, they act and they, they think. That is 95% of the crowd. The people that are running around, just simply running around. If they can't run around, they cannot be happy. Only thing, the goal of life is running around. Aimlessly, that's what horses do. And therefore, what do they do for the horses? If they have to use the horses to run a cart. Because the horse will run as it likes. They put blinders on the horse, so it only sees one direction and not many directions. And then what happens is, the horse has a focus. <coughs> you understand? They have to put the reins around the horse. Otherwise, it will run like a crazy horse. 90% of the population are more than that, are crazy horses. And those type of people are one set of people. Now you say, Eka, Ubhaya. Two sets of teeth. 
is what it means. What it also means is there are people that are born only once. There are people that are born twice. Those type of people also exist. Those that are people, that beings that are born twice are called dhija, two times birth. And you know who they are? Generally referred to? Those that are born once and those that are born twice. In literal sense, dhija means those that are born twice. Animals that are born twice. What are the animals that are born twice? Hello? You are all blanked out here, totally. All the animals that are born out of egg, like birds, they are first born when the conception of the egg occurs. The second type of birth is when they come out of the egg, right? So they, they grow in the egg and they come out of the egg. The egg is laid and from the egg the animal comes out, isn't it? Or the bird comes out. That's called the dhija, two types of birth. And those that are born only once, like human beings, we are born once, right? We are not born twice. Why is it referred to the teeth? That is the question you ask. In the human body, teeth, for many of us, what comes? Two times. Yeah, look at this fellow. Yeah? The center one is gone, right? And it is coming back again. Two times. That's why the teeth are called dvija. Two times. First are the milk teeth, the baby teeth. All of them will fall off. And then you pray to the tooth fairy and all that stuff, right? So that it will give you the real teeth. The teeth that comes later will never fall off. The tooth first, that first came will have to fall off. Means what? We are also born twice. The first time is just when the mother gives us birth. The second time we are reborn is when we develop love for God. We are born again. That is the second birth. So, Ekaha means only one time born people, two times born people are all the devotees. That is the other aspect of the mantra. Bhaktas and the Unbhaktas. That's the second type of meaning for this. See now, when you contemplate on this, that's what I was getting, I was only talking, you, you should know. This, this instrument is just talking. But the programming is coming from somewhere else. And that source code is constantly getting reprogrammed. And how it happens is because he doesn't want ordinary meaning to be told to the devotees, to his devotees. Because this is a Sai Veda. Let me tell you, Veda and the Veda of Sai are not the same. The inner connection of these mantras that Sai gives, not even written in books. You go check this book out from Ramakrishna Mat and read the mantras, what the meaning is given. It says very clearly here, from this came horses, animals with one tenth of teeth, teeth, two sets of teeth, all different animals, goats and water buffaloes came out. And you read this mantra, what does it mean for anybody that is reading that meaning of that mantra? Nothing. Hey, what is this meaning they have written in these books? This is all where the mantras are about animals and animal instinct. And people just stop there. But Sai is not giving the meaning of these mantras because that's what it means. Sai's intent for us all to learn these hymns is because they take us inside and connect us to a higher level. So, one set of teeth, two sets of teeth. Nothing to do with it. One birth, two births. Now what is it to do with now another beautiful insight, that Bhagavan's insight. How many sets of teeth are there for us? Two. Two. How many teeth per set? Never counted, huh? Eh? Yeah. Okay. <laughs> Poor fellow. <laughs> Go count, huh? Eh? Yeah. Huh? Sixteen. So total how many? Total how many? Sixteen plus sixteen. Yeah. Hey, sorry. 32, very good, yeah. But when you actually look at the 32, it's a very important number because there are 32 matrukas or bijakshras from which the entire literature of the Vangmaya came into existence. 32 bija mantras. 
and those thirty two bija mantras become the substratum of the entire Vangmaya, the entire mantra shastra, the entire tantra shastra, entire spiritual stuff we talk about, yantras, tantras, mantras, there are fundamentally 32 matrikas, bijakshras. And those 32 become the substratum of the entire human existence. And what are these 32? Shuddha vidyam kurakara dvijapanti dvayojvala. In Lalita Sahasranama, when the mother is being described, when, they, when the Vak Devatas come to describe her teeth, they say, Shuddha Vidya Ankurakara Dvija Panti Dvayojvala. When you look at the 32 teeth of the mother when she smiles, and those 32 teeth become the substratum of the Shuddha Vidya, the Atma Vidya of an individual can be obtained just by looking at the teeth of Mother Lalita. That's what it means. When Swami smiles, you look at his teeth, that's it. Oh my God, Shuddha Vidya has actually... See, this is the point of Darshan. This is the point of invoking the Divine Being. When you go take Darshan of God, it is not to look... When you look at his form, every single gesture, every single aspect of his walk, his talk, his simple existence, makes us become better and transform. Ekecho Ubhayadataha. Now, very specifically described are Gavaha. Gava means cows. Now there are pure beings that also came out of this yajna and those are the pure cows. Why is the cow so pure? I already covered this I think in one of the classes, right? Why is the cow so pure? Anybody to answer? Yes? Yes? Go ahead. Hmm. Or if this little one wants this little one. Yeah, yeah. <laughs> you remember or no? Eats grass. Hmm? Ah, it takes what is useless and converts everything into what is useful. We take what is very useful and convert it into what is completely wasteful. You understand? That's what a human being does. What a cow does is it takes what is useless, eats grass. And gives pure milk, in fact it's dung, it's urine, it's skin and in fact a beautiful organ, the appendix of a cow is used for actually with Sugandha. And it is specifically taken out for Yajna when the cow is cremated because that contains the most pure essence of the being of the cow and used for worship. The, the horns are used, every part of the cow Huh? The hair of the cow, you cannot even comprehend. 33 million devotees exist just in a cow. So therefore, if you don't have an opportunity to go get the darshan of 33 million devotees, you go around a cow and you do namaskar to it and you actually touch the backside of the cow and sprinkle its urine on yourself, you get purified. Now you see, how there is no animal that is that has such type of purity. In fact, the entire creation of Brahma, he did not create only one animal. He did not have the capacity to create only one animal. And that animal was the cow. And the cow came directly from the yajna of the, of the greatest saints and the rishis. And that was the only animal that was not created by Brahma. Therefore, it takes a very special place. Why? And also Gavaha also means our Jeevatma. Gayatri means the one that protects our being. Kavo Hajagire Tasmat Tasmat Jata Ajaha Avayaha. Tasmat Jata from this Yajna also came Ajaha. Aja means the literal meaning of it is goat. Ajaha means, Ja means birth. Aja means the one who has no birth. The birthless people also came into Aja, Shaya Vinir Mukta, Mukta, Shipra Prasadini, Lalita Sasnava, is a mantra. Ajaha means people that are actually no birth, like means what? 
they are they just took the body as an upadhi they don't have a birth and who is that an avatar like bhagwan swami has no birth isn't it he is pravesha not prasava and he declared that himself we all know the story he is not it his is not entrance he is it is actually pravesh it is entrance he entered into the womb and he was not conceived means what birthless avaya means the one who has all the limbs associated with the hey achintya re king what come in. sit quiet about listen okay yeah so the context of what we are talking about is now when you look at this slok with this mantra how many beautiful types of people that exist and all these came from the yajna how many different types of beings if you only stop at the meaning knowing that all these animals came out it's not that animals are unimportant okay it is not that animals are any animals are very important but animals are animals you can't you can't take hello excuse me hello listen here achint you come here you want to talk okay all right <laughs> so let's chant the mantra again tasmadashwa jayanta ete to bhayarata together i gave you a little bit uh, impromptu notice let's chant again Le- actually let's chant from tasmat yajnat sarva bhutah sambhutam prasadajyam now tasmat yajnat sarva bhutah sambhutam prasadajyam pasho the question has to come from all these things came from the yajna but we said the son of god is sacrificed and now the next mantra is actually asking the question yat purusham yathaduhu when did they actually sacrifice the son of god and what are all the different things or forms that came out of the form of this son of god means what mukham kimasya kau bahu what happened to his face what happened to his shoulders what happened to the the lower body meaning the thighs and the feet what came out of all of that sacrifice of the son of the god that's the question that's being asked here yet this is cool this scale is it too low for me eh? i cannot chant in low scale yat purusham yathadhu ho yat purusham yathadhu ho yat purusham yathadhu ho purusham vyadathu yat purusham vyadathu yat purusham vyadathu kadetha vyakalpayan kadetha vyakalpayan kadetha vyakalpayan 
यत् पुरुषम् यददु हो यत् पुरुषम् यददु हो यत् पुरुषम् यददु हो कथिताव्य कल्पयन् कथिताव्य कल्पयन् कथिताव्य कल्पयन् कल्पयन् द पार इज़ लोअर नोट सो आई थिंक इट इज़ मिसिंग इन द राइट कदिदाव्य कल्पयन् कदिदाव्य कल्पयन् कदिदाव्य कल्पयन् मुखम् किमस्य मुखम् किमस्य मुखम् किमस्य काउबाहु 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 के मस्य कौ बाहु मुखम के मस्य कौ बाहु मुखम के मस्य कौ बाहु काहु रूपादा उच्चे पुरुषम् यददु हो यत् पुरुषम् यददु हो यत् पुरुषम् यददु हो कथिताव्य कल्पयन् कथिताव्य कल्पयन् कथिताव्य कल्पयन् मुखम् किमस्य कौ बाहु चेते काहुरु पादावुचेते काहुरु पादावुचेते ब्राह्मणो स्यमुखमासीत ब्राह्मणो स्यमुखमासीत ब्राह्मणो
ಪದ್ಯಾಗುಂ ಶೂದ್ರೋ ಅಜಾಯತ this question that was asked yat purusham yathatu what happened to the different body parts of this son of god what happened to his face what happened to his shoulders what happened to the upper thighs what happened to his feet and for this particular mantra the answer to that particular questions are described in this mantra ಬ್ರಾಹ್ಮಣೋ ಅಸ್ಯ ಮುಖಮಾಸಿ ಬ್ರಾಹ್ಮಣ ದ ರಿಯಲೈಸ್ಡ್ ಸೋಲ್ಸ್ ಬಿಲಾಂಗಿಂಗ್ ಟು ದ ನೌ ವಾಟ್ ದಿಸ್ ಈಸ್ ದ ವೆರಿ ಇಂಪಾರ್ಟೆಂಟ್ ವೆರಿ ವೆರಿ ಇಂಪಾರ್ಟೆಂಟ್ ಕ್ರೂಷಿಯಲ್ ಮಂತ್ರ ಬಿಕಾಸ್ ದರ್ ಇಸ್ ಅ ಲಾಟ್ ಆಫ್ ಕನ್ಫ್ಯೂಷನ್ ಖಯಾಸ್ ಮಿಸ್ ಇಂಟರ್ಪ್ರಿಟೇಷನ್ ಮಿಸ್ ಅಂಡರ್ಸ್ಟ್ಯಾಂಡಿಂಗ್ ಪ್ರಾಪರ್ ಇಂಟರ್ಪ್ರಿಟೇಷನ್ ಪ್ರಾಪರ್ ಅಂಡರ್ಸ್ಟ್ಯಾಂಡಿಂಗ್ ಆಫ್ ದಿಸ್ ಮಂತ್ರ ಇಸ್ ವೆರಿ ಮಚ್ ರಿಕ್ವೈರ್ಡ್ ಟುಡೇ when people read the literal meaning of this mantra which i will describe and i have an assignment for you for next week and i'll tell you what the assignment is the literal meaning of this mantra is the f- the four castes that are described in the indian caste system which are the four castes you know yeah uh, brahmins yeah uh, brahmins kshatriyas vaishyas and shudras what are these four classes of society brahmins are huh brahmins sir just tell whatever you know that's okay if your ignorance is bliss i'm going to convert that into something different now this mantra is interpreted with ignorance <laughs> well, uh, yeah well they say it's like the priestly stuff but it's really the one who has realized from the <laughs> yeah the higher class the upper class is referred to as brahmins then rajanyaha means the kshatriyas the warrior class the soldiers the war- the warrior class the ruler class then the third one is the the merchants the vaishyas and the shudras are re- interpreted as the lowest class now this has created total chaos and confusion in the system now the homework assignment is i am going to send you all by email again to those 15 families that are committed not everybody in the in the system because those that genuinely want to study what this really means and understand the inner intent and i will take you i want to take the emails of those that are committed to vedha class only not every tom dick and harry and send this beautiful chapter that is described from geeta vahini from bhagwan's own words what's the interpretation of the chaturvarnas the four different caste system that are described in the ancient sanatan dharma the brahmins came from the face the soldiers the warriors came from the shoulders the merchants came from the thighs and the other class came from his feet that is the literal meaning of the mantra the homework assignment is you will get this chapter next week from 9 to 10 those that are studying the purusha sukta in this class should come together and do a study circle on that particular piece from geeta vahini from bhagwan's geeta vahini and condense a synopsis and we will discuss that on the easter sunday as part of the easter program that's the assignment okay what this means also when this comes to the class in other systems the castes are not described 
like in the western society the castes are not described what does this caste system really mean for us from spiritual point of view i don't want answer or contemplation in the quantum of course there are other aspects so bring out everything and i want the christians in the in the audience particularly diana auntie to figure out what does this mean in the context of if you are a christian and you are not exposed to all this caste system as a westerner what does this mean for you what does this mean from jesus christ the son of god when he was one man he was sacrificed from his face came brahmins from his shoulders came this sacrifices of jesus christ not of some hindu god right so let's make sure what does that mean in the context of christianity what does that mean in the context of aunty can bring perspective from zarathustra and religion right aunty and uh, let's try to study that and we will study the synopsis of this mantra on easter sunday that's the homework assignment with that we will close hmm? oh ho Yo yo